an estimated 50% of people in Africa still live with no electricity. The rate of access varies from one country to the other. Due to increasing urbanization and population growth, most countries' energy needs will grow substantially. To better prepare and to close the existing gap, African countries are exploring alternative sources of energy. Some countries have identified nuclear energy as a potential addition to their energy mix. Currently, South Africa has the continent's only commercial nuclear power plant. Egypt, Ghana, Kenya, Morocco, Niger, Nigeria and Sudan have already engaged with the International Atomic Energy Agency to assess their readiness to embark on a nuclear program. Another fair number of countries have entered into various agreements with China and Russia regarding nuclear technology development. Establishing a successful nuclear program can take up to 15 years. From commissioning to decommissioning, a nuclear power plant can operate for 40 to 60 years. There are many factors to consider when planning to build a nuclear power plant and they apply to all countries. This video will address just five factors and how they might affect Africa's nuclear plants. Finances Nuclear power plants are expensive to build and require significant capital. Without proper financing in place, nuclear is not an option. On average, the cost of building a 1000 megawatts plant can range from $6 billion to $9 billion. A great example is Egypt's plant El Daba nuclear plant, which will have four 1200 megawatts reactors. The project is estimated to cost $28 billion, which can be broken down to $7 billion per unit. Russia is expected to finance up to $25 billion, and Egypt will cover the rest. However, Egypt has to pay back the loan at a rate of 3% over 13 years. Upon calculation, the estimated interest will be over $5 billion, which means the total cost of the plant will be approximately $34 billion, or $8.5 billion per unit. Once construction is completed, running the plant is relatively cheap but still has expenses which include fewer costs, labor, and in the long term, waste management and decommissioning. One solution for these expenses is to emulate Finland, Spain, and Sweden who have a special fund in which the plant owners contribute annually. The accumulated funds are reserved to pay for waste management, disposal, and decommissioning. Most African countries cannot spare enough funds in their budget to cover the cost of the entire project. To finance the project, the countries are establishing joint ventures that include funding. Existing electrical grid capacity. To supply the generated power, nuclear plants have to be connected to national power grids. However, to safely introduce nuclear energy, it is recommended to have a grid capacity that is 10 times the capacity of the planned nuclear plant. So, if a country wants a 1000 megawatts plant, the grid capacity should be 10,000 megawatts. In a real world example, Kenya aims to build a 1000 megawatts nuclear plant. However, its 2400 megawatts installed capacity is insufficient. Egypt has an installed capacity of 59,500 megawatts. This is sufficient for its planned 4800 megawatts nuclear plant. Kenya and other African countries with insufficient grid capacities would need to increase their installed capacities. This can be achieved by joining a regional grid. One example is the West African Power Pool, which was created to integrate the power grids of ECOWAS member countries. The alternative would be to explore other small nuclear plant options. One option is to invest in small modular reactors. SMRs can generate up to 300 megawatts of power per unit. Some of the benefits include lower initial capital requirements, greater scalability, and seating flexibility due to small size and low power. SMRs can be manufactured in a factory and transported to the site for assembly. This technology has not been widely adopted around the world for commercial application, and some countries are wary of investing in emerging technologies. Kenya Nuclear Board recognizes the opportunity SMRs present. However, the board insisted it would only introduce the technology after it's been built and tested elsewhere. Operations Once the nuclear plant is completed and commissioned, it has to be operated safely throughout its life cycle by highly trained personnel. This will depend highly on the kind of joint venture the countries enter with the funding company. There are two approaches the countries can take. Build operate transfer or build operate own. A build operate transfer approach involves building the power plant with foreign expertise 
operating the plant under the management of the foreign investors for a certain period until all the money is recovered, and finally transferring the ownership of the plant to the country in which it's built. A build-operate-own approach involves the same steps except the transfer of ownership. The plant is owned by the foreign investors throughout its useful life. African countries are keen on taking part in the operations of the nuclear plants through nuclear tech training cooperation agreements. Others are sponsoring students to go abroad and study nuclear tech. For example, in 2015, Kenya sponsored its students to go study nuclear engineering in South Korea. Nuclear Waste Management Nuclear plants produce radioactive waste in form of spent nuclear fuel. The nuclear waste comes in small quantities but can quickly add up throughout the years, especially in countries that operate many reactors. Countries have to figure out how to handle the spent fuel. This has been an issue worldwide as there is currently no viable long-term solution. The three options available include on-site storage, long-term deep storage, and reprocessing. Most countries keep their spent fuel on site as a temporary solution. A few other countries reprocess their waste. This is not the best solution as the byproduct of reprocessing is plutonium. This increases the risk of nuclear terrorism as less than 9 kilograms of plutonium is needed to make a simple nuclear weapon. If the plutonium remains bound in a large, heavy and highly radioactive spent fuel assembly, it is nearly impossible to steal. South Africa produces 32 tons of spent fuel every year at its Kuburg nuclear power plant. Its spent nuclear fuel is stored on site inside special storage pools. In 2019, it was reported that the storage capacity would run out by April 2020. The country procured dry storage casks from the United States as an alternative storage method. Finland is the only country working on a 3.5 billion euros long-term nuclear spent fuel repository. Public acceptance. Nuclear is not universally accepted by the public. Some countries including in Africa may be more accepting of nuclear while others may not. The anti-nuclear public opinion is often cited as a major obstacle in the development of nuclear energy. The key arguments against nuclear focus on three issues. A repeat of a serious nuclear reactor accident with consequences like those of Chernobyl accident, lack of a safe waste management solution, and a link between civilian nuclear power and nuclear weapons. South Africa has two major anti-nuclear activist groups, Kuburg Alert and Adlife Africa. Anti-nuclear activism will likely grow across Africa as various countries advance their nuclear plans. If you're new here, please like, subscribe and activate the bell icon so that you don't miss future videos. Thank you for watching. See you later.